These are confirmatory tests for brain death. These should be used when the clinical criteria for brain death alone cannot be applied. There's a number of situations where these confirmatory tests might be appropriate. If the patient is heavily sedated or has muscle paralysis, if you can't otherwise examine the cranial nerves, if a patient is a carbon dioxide retainer, such as if they have COPD and they can't do an apnea test, and if you want to shorten the observation period, instead of waiting a week or so for sedation to wear off, you might do this confirmatory test. The tests are all imaging or EKG. Cerebral angiography is the gold standard. It can be invasive. Um, you would see absent blood flow at or beyond the carotid bifurcation or circle of Willis. Transcranial Doppler is a little bit easier. It's at bedside. It's safe and non-invasive, but you do need expertise. Magne magnetic resonance angiography can show absence of arterial blood flow. Um, this might be difficult if you have heavy clinical monitoring in the MRI. Computed tomography angiography is invasive, requires iodine contrast, and is lower sensitivity. Radionucleotide brain imaging has a tracer and a single photon emission CT. The tracer penetrates the brain proportionally. Um, there's no redistribution. This, this is what you see in the background here. Lastly, EEG is useful in very young patients. A very flat EKG called electrocerebral silence will be present. You need two of these within a 30-minute recording period, 24 hours apart.